Hi Sagittarius and welcome back to the channel. Thank you everybody who hits the subscribe and like buttons. That is you giving back and supporting to the channel. So it's greatly appreciated. Now we're going to do a reading for Sagittarius Sun, Moon and Rising for the month of May 2020. And we're going to get into some different aspects for you Sag because there's a lot of karmic stuff going down this month. And for you it's all about relationships. And that theme has been going on for a few months now but you definitely were hit with it in April. And and through to May so we're going to touch on that for you now what we're going to talk about because we've talked about the 2019 2020 Saturn Pluto right through to to the end of the year in December but we're going to talk about it in a different way because 2020 is about laying new foundations doing the work and closing out our karmic cycles so what we're going to talk about here is a little bit about our south node and our north node and what we're talking about today and you're like what is that well they're to do with karma so that's why I wanted to touch on it for you for the month of May. So this is a little bit of a different twist. If you don't know your South and North node, there'll be a link below and you can click on your natal chart and you will see where your South and North node are. And that's like a karmic um, wounding, the South node, uh, where you need to grow or grow beyond and a north node and that's like your karmic medicine the balancing point but with karma we can't just go from here to here you know we've, we've always got to find this balancing point and currently the month of may your south node sagittarius is we've got this sorry we've got this south node and north node um capricorn set has been in the south node cancer has been in the north node but for you, Sagittarius, your south node's been in the second house. That's about money, survival, and how you feel safe and secure internally, therefore externally, okay? Now, it's also the, the, the medicine, the north node, the cancer that wants to come in and heal and, and, and get more emotional and heal all those emotions for you is in the eighth house and the eighth house makes us feel uncomfortable it brings up everything uncomfortable and it will make you feel uncomfortable so Saji, it's bringing up all your insecurities um, and everywhere you need to overcome those insecurities crisis around resources internal therefore external and protection protection about survival so you know where you felt threatened there, whether it's money, work, and 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 when or whatever it is for you. But it's about relationships, people, places, and situations. So Sag, there is a theme this month, and it's for the month of May. The the South and North Node, the Moon energy that's transiting and moving, is hitting that for you. So. You're learning a karmic lesson here. And that's why it's hitting the house of relationships. You've got all that in the month of May. You've got um, the full moon, Scorpio full moon on the 7th of May, um, hitting your 7th and 12th house, hitting your 12th house, sorry. So, you know, you will want to go into seclusion, withdrawal, peacefulness, because it's time out, because it, the moon, Scorpio, is very deep in all emotions and goes very deeply into those emotions and illuminates the subconscious, the unseen, the intangible. And it's going to bring it all up for you this full moon. And Scorpio is deeply intense, deeply emotional and deeply sensitive to all of that and your south node and your north node there we go the south node's been in capricorn harsh energy harsh truths hitting your second house of money survival security stability resources and and this full moon in scorpio is highlighting that and the north node in cancer for you in the eighth house is going to make this incredibly uncomfortable. Bring your insecurities up. But it's about finding a balancing point. Here's the medicine. 
It's asking you to find a balancing point in your relationships. Where in your relationships, Sagittarius, as a collective, and this has been going on for a long time, you are going to be reviewing and setting a new karmic foundation. For those of you who do your work, do your healing, restructure, put in the work and the effort. Where you will be reviewing all your relationships where you are deeply bonded or you want to be more deeply bonded now, from now on out in, into the future, with your relationships where you can be vulnerable but safe. So Sagittarius is reviewing all relationships. Relationships with money, people, places, situations where it's like you're getting to the very bottom of how much you give in relationships, how much you're getting back, what really is safe, where you really can be vulnerable but safe. And any relationship with anyone or anything that you're not feeling that, the Sagis will be on the way out of those relationships. They will be moving forward and moving on. Because this is your karmic lesson, Sagittarius. And you need to take responsibility for where you gave too much energy or you um, and didn't receive that back or where you put in more or where you allowed, enabled certain things to go on in your relationships. And it is a wounding and it's somewhere you need to grow. So Sagittarius, it's like you're stepping up. And here's the good news, Sag. Once this Capricorn Cancer hits two degrees, it begins to change and it's going to change into Sagittarius and Gemini, karmic north, south and north node karmic energy. So it's like a breath of fresh air is coming. So this is your opportunity, Sagittarius, to really dig deep into your relationships, into your foundations, into where you truly feel safe to be totally vulnerable and know you're going to be safe. That's the big focus here. And then that's linked to your collective karma out into the world, you know, your law of attraction. So... Sagittarians need to be in relationships where they can now go on a deeper bonding level within relationships, allow themselves to be vulnerable, but they know they're going to be safe. And anyone that, or anything that has not got that energy or relationship with Sagittarius, Sagis will be moving on at some point. Okay, so keep that in mind because another thing I want to bring up about this month, I talked about the Scorpio new full moon, sorry, that's your relationship, Sagittarius, with everything. That's what it's going to hit for you. And remember, June, we've got eclipse season coming. We've got eclipses next month in June, sudden endings and beginnings. So we've got a lot going on there. But here's the other thing on the 12th, you've got Mercury. In Venus, in the seventh house of relationships, that's communication, contracts. Venus is going retrograde, though, until the 26th of June. So we're going back over. We've actually got retrograde this month. Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn bringing huge shifts because we retrograde, retrograde, retrograde is going backwards. But it never goes backwards to exactly the same. It goes backwards to review or redo with a new perspective, with a different idea, with more information, with new information, with new perspectives. So it never retrogrades back to exactly the issue. There's always more to it, like a growth. But we've got a lot of re retrograde here, so there's a lot of going back, a lot of reviewing this month. But... And I even said last month or two months ago that mid-May, we would all be dusting ourselves off, processing what's going on, the shifts, the changes, and we'll be able to dust ourselves and stand up and go, okay, now I need to get 
a plan of action or, you know, I'm, I'm processing, I've processed it all, now I'm, I'm getting up ready to move forward. So, but that full moon for you this month is, is going to be incredibly intense, Sagittarius. So please watch what comes up from the subconscious healing, do your healing, withdrawal, um, uh, seclusion, time out, breaks, nurturing, find your peace, find your peaceful spot because it's all coming up. But you are healing a karmic south and north node issue that needs to be addressed in all your relationships. Just going to grab a drink of water. <clears throat> so anywhere and everywhere, your values are going to be restructured, reprioritized, um, looked into. The 21st, the sun hits the seventh house um, on the 21st of May, and the sun's going to illuminate the seventh house of relationships for you. And then with the 22nd, we've got the new moon in relationship house in Gemini, Gemini new moon. So there you go. And um, there's a lot going on here because um, there will still be a little bit of conflicting energy at the end of the month around your relationship house. But... Um, you and the 13th and 14th, sorry, of Merc um, May, around when Mercury in Venus goes retrograde, <laughs> going back over things, it is falling in your fourth house. And we've got Mars in the fourth house, your assertion. So doing things in the home, okay, um, feeling homey, a lot to do with family, relationships, the home, all of that. So never push anything in a retrograde. Review, do your work. And maybe slow down um, and look at what's beautiful in your life, what you're grateful for, you know, particularly when we're going through such a big time here because Sagittarius, you are doing things in a different way. You are doing relationships in a different way with yourself first and foremost and with others. Whoop, bump the table there. So, you know, it's love, money and relationships Venus retrograde, the start of the month for you in May, moving backwards, going over. But remember that south node and that north node karmic lesson. It's, it's the lesson. It just wants a balancing point. It wants you to find a balance in it. So we have to look at ourselves. We have to look at others. And we have to find this balancing point. Re-evaluate our values um, within relationships, prioritizing. And I'm hearing that for Sagittarian, you need to reprioritize yourself. It's time for Sagittarius to maybe start putting themselves first and foremost in a healthy, balanced way where we have balance in relationships. Because Sagis can do too much. They can take on too much. They can do too much. They can give way too much energy out. Okay, so you'll know what your individual issue is because we all have our own charts. We all have our own individual charts. So different houses, so different things going on. But you will know what it is because Sagittarius is looking very deeply into the unseen reasons about their relation or issues, reasons, issues, situations, karma, law of attraction, what's going on for them with their relationship with everything, including themselves. So this is deep, Sagittarius. This is, you are called to go into the deep de depths and do not avoid. So do your work, do your healing, particularly around that full moon. Please, everybody, watch the full moon. Scorpio is deep and intensive. We've all that Scorpio energy. You know, I wouldn't be getting into any arguments around that full moon. Um, it can be, you know, the scorpion tail. You know, we can have nasty stuff. You know, for Sagittarius, and I haven't got into the other signs yet, but um, too deeply. But you know, when we're feeling insecure. Or people are in general, you know, stuff can come out around that Scorpio and it's going to be their deep, 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 deep stuff. So be be aware of that. Where your, your buttons will be more easily pressed this month, the Sagittarius. So take that into account. Um, 
And I want you to look at money, like money, security, stability, finances, your security. And if it's not money for you and you're like, my money's fine, then it's it's on a deeper bonded level within relationships, okay? And feeling vulnerable and safe within those relationships. But what I want you to ask yourself is, what are my money issues bringing up in me or for me this month in particular? And go on that deep inner journey, okay? Um, Oh my God. But, but you do, you know, a lot of you will have home and family supporting you. Or if you don't, um, you want to be in the home or you want to connect to the home, some answers might come through home and family um, about, you know, you and relationships or healing or, you know, maybe there's a family member that can give you information that helps you heal. So we've got a lot of that going on. So it's a big month, Sagittarius. But now let's look at some cards. Let's get some messages for the month. Oh, there's so much wants to come out. For Sagittarius, the month of May. Let's see what the cards and messages from the cards. Yeah, look at that. Straight away, the Queen of Swords popped out for you, Sagittarius. Now, you know, the Queen of Swords, um, she can become very analytical and, and she's cutting, you know, that she's known. It's not her only thing. She's got beautiful, deep emotions. She can be very loving and caring and nurturing, but she has that sword and she knows she has to cut things, people, places, situations out of her life that are making her not feel, not allowing her to be vulnerable and feel safe. Or I'm going to say anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, because look at this, Sagittarius. The second card that came out here was the Knight of Cups. Now we're going to look at this a few different ways because I am speaking as a collective. So I've got to look at a few different um, options here for these cards. But as an overall energy, look at this, the Queen of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Two of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands. Okay, the Queen of Swords has her sword. She can block her emotions and cut out what needs to be cut out. She may withdraw. She may seem cold or come across cold around the Scorpio full moon. She may be cutting people out of her life because she wants connection. This is love, romance. Um, maybe that's coming in for you. A lot of you may have someone coming in that wants to connect for you singles or even couples that need this reconnection. This is someone who wants to wine, dine, romance, bring the beauty back, you know, um, the love back, the deeper connection, the, all the cups, the knight of cups, the king of cups, they want to connect on a deep emotional level but feel safe so they can be vulnerable. So there it is, there's the energy. There is a big, big wounding for you this month, Sagittarius, to be healed. This man is healing this baby. We have pentacles. We have these lovers, relationships in the back, faith, loyalty. The dog makes us feel safe and secure and protected. So there it is, Sagittarius, cutting out. You need to go deeper in your relationships and you want to be bonded and more safe and loving and nurturing and vulnerable and fall further into that deep connectedness within relationships. And there is a healing happening here within your relationships, the abundance, the give and take. Um, and it is about protection, survival, security, stability. And there's the healing. There's the karmic healing. Then Sagittarius, mid-month around the Scorpio full moon, she's sitting back. The Queen of Wands is can take action. She's a fire cut, fire energy. She can take action. But look at her sitting back in this card. She knows her value. She knows her worth. She knows her truth. But she's sitting back in it. So she, to me, she's not out, you know, she's reviewing. So around that full moon, sit back, okay? You're getting a whole new world, Sagittarius, a whole new paradigm. A lot of people will not know who you are, how you're doing relationships now with yourself, with others. So there's a lot of confusion because you're presenting them or will be after the full moon or around that full moon onwards into the year, with a whole new paradigm, a whole new beginning, a whole new movie. And you're defending it. You're standing your ground. You put the past behind you, Sagittarius. She's going to defend her ground. This is how I'm doing it. So, um, 
For Sagittarian, you know, there's a deep element here. Not always, but, you know, there is a deep element of Sagittarian energy. Not saying all Sagittarius is like this, but all the time. But, you know, they can negotiate a lot. They can tend to look at the bigger picture. Sagittarius is as... Energetically out there, though, they do look at the bigger picture for the good of all the future. So they tend to let a lot of things go or a lot of aspects go rather than deal with them. They avoid because they can tend to see the bigger picture for the good or for the all or see everybody's side or um, and sometimes they'll defend that. But this is about you personally defending your new relationship. I'm going to say standards, boundaries, priorities, values. Okay, and you're going to take the time to put this in play. It's slow, steady. See, holding the pentacle, slow, steady planning foundation. This is doing it properly. Okay, um, <laughs> it's a big jump for you, Sagittarius. You know, there's a you know even at the end of the month, this is catching her breath. She's trying to catch her breath here. She's trying to process it. She's made some big leaps and big jumps um, and she's got to process it and catch her breath or he, she. There's no gender here with the cards. It's an energy. It's a personality trait, okay? And at the end of the month, see the Queen of Cups. Sagittarius wants to Connect on a much deeper level emotionally. Feel emotionally bonded in relationships where they have, may have never ever been before, and that is going to be their new foundation. But in that, it's going to be balanced. Cups are always about emotional balance, giving and receiving. You know, what makes them feel safe? When we've got emotional giving and receiving, we feel safe. We feel secure. We can be more vulnerable and open. So we've got the Queen of Swords making cuts, the Knight of Cups here offering, connecting, love, romance, the beauty, the beautiful stuff, the deeper levels, healing, the Queen of Wands, the new beginning, standing your ground in this, putting in a plan of action, maybe having to face some people, places and situations. And I just heard for some of you with love, love is coming in, a soulmate, a twin flame, or if you're in a relationship, there's a deeper connection within your relationship that could come up that you need to get to or be able to get to with your partner. So, and it will take your breath away. It'll take a bit of processing because you haven't been there before. You haven't gone there before, Sagittarius. And so here we are at the end of the month, the Queen of Cups, all about emotion, trusting our intuition, being able to trust and feel our feelings intuitively and that means allowing yourself to be vulnerable emotionally but it's in relationships with yourself and with others and who you're connecting with. So if that's not one of the biggest months and readings for you Sagittarius, wow. So some of you may be having someone come into your life, your love life, where it's going to be love and romance and deeper connection and, and all of that for couples. You could be, you know, analysing uh, what's going on in your relationship and wanting that deeper connection going another level. For some of you, whether it's job, career, or just your relationship with everything, you're cutting everything out that is not bringing you this healed feeling of being vulnerable, you know, being safe and vulnerable in relationships, feeling protected in relationships. And I'm not just talking, well, physically, yes, because physical's the out. If we feel safe and protected on the inside, we're actually safe and protected on the outside. So there's going to be a lot of deep healing issues coming up for Sagittarius. Yep, Sagittarius, you are putting people out in the cold. Or you could, you could be coming across like you are, particularly around, or you need to do that around that Scorpio full moon in particular. But yep, cutting. See, the Wheel of Fortune is fallen on the Knight of Cups here. Change is happening, Sag. And, you, and it's, chap, it's happening to you and all signs because we're being forced with the Karmic South Node and North Node to 
complete look, face, change this karmic issue because it's about to move into another area. Your north node's about to, and south node's about to move into Sagittarius and Gemini. So you have to do this. Do it. it it'll be for the better if you want change in relationships. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Sagittarius, you want healing, peace. Look at this. You want to be able to feel safe and vulnerable, be yourself and, and be with people who allow that, who are that, who match that. So there it is. The Queen of Wands. Here she is sitting back around the full moon, knows her values, reset her values, her priorities in relationships. She knows who she is now. She's going to take action and pick up that magician, that magic wand, and start manifesting her new life, her new beginning, her new vision, her new movie, her new paradigm. And there's new beginnings as well, messages from spirit, healing, the creator, but also messages from people or communication here. And some of that is going to trigger you or trigger the people around you, particularly in your subconscious. And that's the middle line here. The subconscious, the Scorpio full moon is going to be triggered in your subconscious, in your 12th house, the subconscious. And you have to stand your ground, put your past behind you and do your work, Sagittarius. Or defend yourself within your, your um, new foundation. Okay, and um, this is allowing you to be more practical, make plans for the future, but where you're more, you know, the pentacles and the sword. So you're really putting you first here, Sag. You're really putting in a new plan for a new foundation, new values, new priorities for yourself within relationships. And this is a bit, you know, businessy. I'm really thinking how I need to do this now or how I need to be in relationships. So, and you're going to have the strength and get the strength to do it. You can do it, Sagittarius. It's overwhelming, but you have the strength card there, the courage, the confidence, the energies come back. And look at this. Anywhere and everywhere you've had conflict, Sagittarius, with deeper connection in relationships, this is what you're being faced to deal with. Any conflict that comes up around you at the end of the month who maybe do not like your new relationship rules, values, there could be some conflict for some of you outwardly with people or inwardly with yourself or vice versa. It, it's, it affects both ways. But here it is. So whether it's conflict with people and 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 this deeper connection of love, emotion, um, who you are now in relationships, it is going to cause some conflict, whether it's for yourself or others or vice versa, or you will just be moving away from this. You're not doing this. I feel it's more you're not doing this anymore. You're not doing the imbalance. You're not giving more than you're receiving. You want to de you want to be able to connect with all people, places, and situations from now on. Look at this that brings you long-term security and stability, where you're able to be vulnerable and safe. And look at you looking into that Sagittarius. So. And it's heart stuff. It is emotional. It's deep emotional heart stuff. So a new foundation on where you're supported, where you feel supported. Because the more secure and st stable in support you feel on the inside um, within yourself, which is the second house and the eighth house making you feel uncomfortable with your north and south mode. No, once you clear that issue, heal that issue, resolve this issue, look at this. Success. Boom. Ending of a karmic cycle. You, I say no more. The cards just validated everything we talked about with the South and North Node, with what's going on planetary aspects, and look at that. You are healing a karmic issue. You can have success here, Sagittarius. You can go beyond deep into deeper connection and bonded relationships where you can feel safer and vulnerable and connect even deeper into heart and emotion, which brings you more security, more abundance, more stability, even with your money, with your friends, with your groups, with your home, with your living, with your foundation. So what's 2020 about? Setting a new foundation. Wow, Sagittarius. 
that's big that is huge so i would say you are i'm going to wrap it up here but look at this i was about to say you are going through a transformation and look what popped out the transformation card the butterfly transformation this is you not oh i've made some changes oh i'm different this is you sagittarius seeing life your values what's really secure and um, stable for you from a new new higher perspective this is standing on top of a mountain looking down over the town a new perspective where you see it all you can't go back you can't go back into those other relationships that didn't give you that feeling of um, safe and secure where you could be sorry where you could be um, vulnerable and you felt unsafe or insecure so you couldn't be vulnerable sorry I twisted that around you know what I mean so that's a no I just heard a no for Sagittarius so anywhere and everywhere any person place situation has made you feel unsafe not secure not supported on a deep valued core level because it's time to connect deeper Sagittarius and this is your transformation this is not oh I've changed transformation this is I see a whole new picture now I've had epiphanies revelations I can't go back and do that old way anymore and it might take you through to the end of the year I don't know but this is being activated now to heal for the month of May because the, those nodes will be moving soon. So you want to clear up this karmic energy. You want this. You want this transformation to happen, Sag. And you'll be so much happier. So much happier. I just pulled one more deep card. Yep. King of Swords and the Ten of Swords. So a complete ending of a cycle. And we'll just put one love card because this is all about emotion and love and deep in connected bonds. And you want to free yourself, Sagittarius. You're freeing yourself from the old bonds, the old um, ways where you didn't feel safe, secure in relationships. So that it is safe for you to love so finally sagittarius if you do this karmic work or you go through this karmic lesson you're going to free yourself this month and so that it, you actually feel that it is safe finally for you to love and you'll be able to get out there and flirt and maybe find the one or you know find the way for you um so that's what's happening and for a lot of you it's trying to bring you towards a soulmate okay and bringing in that playfulness because when we're playful we're more vulnerable when we're more vulnerable when we're more playful and and we we've got to be able to do that and feel safe because Sagittarius you deserve that love you deserve that um that um requited love not the unrequited love that you have received from all people places and situations with gross and great grace and ease so I just wanted to put that there nicely so you know you'll bring in more you'll be deeper romantic connections deeper romance with yourself with life with being vulnerable so bringing in new passion now okay so there you go it's time to release so that you can bring back that fun saggy um passion playful flirty um energy because you deserve love you deserve the required energy in relationships where it's back and forth and equal so that you can actually feel vulnerable again and safe so that's a big big healing journey karmic issue for Sagittarius to deal with and then you can let go of control issues and we all have them everyone has them every sign has them because there are fears so there you go, Sagittarius. I'm going to leave it here because I could keep going and going and going and talk to Sagittarius all day. But at the end of the month, you'll be able to express your love more deeply and you and vice versa. Okay, so there it is, Sagittarius. It's big. Hang in there. Go on the ride. Do the work. I hope this has helped you get through the month of May and we will see you next month, um, June. Eclipse time.
See you then.